uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, we, the city of Tucson has gone through several city managers over that 25 years or something. So every time, fortunately, early on, we had city managers who were very, very informed on the project because they, they were born and raised here in Tucson. But as time evolved, we had city managers that came from out of state. And my role uh, was to talk to Fred, and, and, and the airport authority was uh, very involved with making sure that we're keeping the city manager informed, because you can understand how things got very political, keeping the mayor and council informed. So how do you, how do you deal with that? So my role was, because there was a protocol within the city where the airport authority didn't was involved with that, my job was to make sure that the chain of command and how that information was being shared. So a lot of times we get a new city manager and Fred and I would get together and say, look, uh, he'd get together with his uh, his boss uh, and we decide, okay, we, we need to update the city manager because we don't want him to get blindsided, for one. If the constituency, constituency is starting to... Uh, put pressure on the different wards that were affected by the airport Superfund site, which was Ward 1 and 5. So trying to keep not only the ward council members informed, but keeping the city manager informed and the mayor informed and making sure the information wasn't coming from different sources that was not correct or accurate. So we had to really think about Okay, do, when do we do it? You can just jump in and say, okay, we got to do it because sometimes it's not necessary because we're not ready to share the information that we think is going to be forthcoming here soon, you know, because sometimes these studies would share, would, would shed new light on what's really going on, you know, in the subsurface. So once we had good information and we thought the time was right, we would go and meet. Fred and I would go and meet with the city manager and, you know, basically just present the information in a very short version. Mm -hmm. And well, just this interview alone, you know, could, is taking, you know, some time. Can you imagine that the FaceTime we have with the city manager is very busy, you know, he doesn't have a couple hours to sit down, look, this is the way it goes and this is how it is and this is the city's responsibility. So trying to figure out what was really needed to give him a snapshot of what they need to know. Mm -hmm. And then they could decide how they wanna deliver that information to the mayor and council to keep them informed because they want to be informed. And and that was kind of my role to, to let the other parties with the airport property kind of keep them in tune and say, okay, guys, I think uh, I think we need to step up uh, because things are getting a little edgy over here you know, in, the, in the political arena. So we, we maybe we need to go get the information to the right people now before somebody else comes in and gives them information that, that that's not justifiable or, or just for a different purpose, you know, just to get everyone excited because they have a different agenda. So that was kind of my role too, to kind of keep the city managers involved and, and keep them informed and they appreciate it because they, they could deal with issues that would come up that I obviously would not know, or maybe in the, in, in some other format that maybe politically someone is trying to create some controversy and they could diffuse it. That was the main thing. Try to diffuse it so it wouldn't destroy the city's image because remember, I, my role has always been to continue to build trust with the community. So that's in kind of another way to kind of look at it because we wanted to make sure that the city was delivering factual, honest, and, trans and transparent information. 